Okay, so if you're having issues with picking locks or if you just want to kind of get some tips on how to do that. So I want to go through and show you and kind of talk through some footage of me picking a master level lock. But I want to share some tips that I kind of utilize now for how I go about picking locks. So being able to pick locks like a master, my tip number one, it's going to be less about picking the lock. And instead, it's going to be more about finding the keys that will be used and get them into the slots they need to go in. So basically, work the keys, not the lock. Second tip, start small and then progress. So you're gonna find the keys that go with one lock and not many locks or the least number as possible. As I'm sure many of you have seen that as you hover over the different keys that the locks will highlight blue if they can actually be slotted into that lock. So if you can reduce it down to just work on one, that will be beneficial. Tip number three, most likely you'll need to figure out the locks out of order. So do not worry about working your way outside in how you actually will do it in the game. So for example, you might have to work the second lock and then maybe the fourth lock and then maybe the first lock and then maybe the third lock to kind of finish it out. Tip number four, do not slot the key until you are absolutely sure it will unlock the lock. Many keys can be slotted into different locks. So slot the wrong key and you won't be able to succeed at picking the lock. And tip number five, take your time and do not rush. I believe the game pauses while you're actually attempting to pick the lock, but I'm not totally sure as I usually just clear the area. So I'm never really under distress or fire and you should always do that too. So just take your time. So when you first get into the screen for picking locks, you're gonna see the different circles or locks in the middle of your screen and off on the right side, you're gonna have your different keys. Now on master level, there's gonna be 12 different keys that needed to get fit into some kind of order into the locks in the middle. Now for simplifying it, I'm going to use one, two, three, four for the locks inside out and for the keys one through 12. Now this might be beneficial to you as it would help you kind of keep track of where you are looking to slot in some of the different keys to the locks, but this is the way I'm gonna be communicating it to you here in this video. So as I start to kind of move around some of the different locks, so right away, kind of just starting out with the first key here, I'm already reduced down to just that second ring or that second lock. So it's kind of nice to already be reduced down. Now that doesn't mean that this key will be used on that lock, but it is nice to know that this key will only go and fit into that lock because the game does try to give you some tricky kind of situations where you can get multiple keys, go to multiple locks, or you can get multiple keys that go to just one lock. So as I kind of look around and rearrange this, I just kind of want to get an idea of really where this fits in. And the next thing I'm kind of looking for, since I'm already just secluded here to just one lock, looking at that second lock with this one key, what I'm trying to also eyeball, if there's any other keys on the right side that fit the pattern of the open slots on that second key. So it, as I'm kind of scrolling through, looking at all the different keys on the right side, I'm kind of noticing that there's not really another key that fits into those slots that are open. So now I just start to look around at some of the different keys and I look at key number two and obviously I come across, well, this key is gonna be used in the second lock as well. But I also kind of notice here that keys one and two kind of overlap. So obviously both of those aren't gonna be used together. And then I go on to key number three and I notice, okay, so I got one, two and three keys that all go to lock number one. So this is a little bit tricky here and I can kind of get an early idea that, okay, lock number two is actually gonna be the difficult one to kind of find out. So what you wanna do, even if you have some keys that are not going to be utilized in figuring out the actual lock, you know, even at the end, you kind of still wanna arrange the keys to the situation or to the open holes that will help you unlock that lock so that you can kind of look through some of the different and other keys 
to see which one will work. So basically I just go around, kind of rearrange some of them. And you might have already kind of put together which ones will go into which slots or whatnot if you're looking at some of the keys. And this is a good example of not all keys are going to be utilized. So key number five, not gonna be utilized. So I don't really have to worry about that. And then take a look here at key number six. I just kind of take some time, arrange it to where I can see, you know, what kind of possibilities that's gonna be there for that lock number two. So this lock's kind of fun as we really already have four really good possibilities for keys that will go into lock number two. And we know lock number five is not gonna get used. So really this puzzle is really gonna come down to picking the second lock. And really, as you kind of go through the keys, you're really looking for those that apply to just single or individuals. And in the case for figuring out this entire puzzle, really, you're wanting to find the keys that go to the least number of locks as possible. So now we have one, two, three, six, and eight are really good possibilities to go into lock number two still. And it also helps sometimes to look at some of the different locks to see what are some of the different patterns that you have on those locks to see what kind of keys that you might have. And really kind of what I was thinking here as I'm looking at that lock number one, well, there's no key that has two that are just side by side. So I already am starting to think, okay, I'm gonna have to use two singles on that lock number one. So I start to arrange two singles into position for lock number one. So I basically have already figured out, okay, 10 and 11 are gonna go to lock number one. And this is also where I had a little bit of a mindset shift as I move away from working on lock number two, actually to trying to see if I can figure out locks one, three, and four to see if I can also eliminate some other possibilities. I also come to the conclusion here that key number 12 will fit into locks two and four, but since I've already used 10 and 11 for lock number one, and there's nothing else that can really fit into lock four, then I'm gonna have to use key 12 into lock four. And then I'll also have to use a single as well. So locks one and locks four are pretty much completely done. I just need to work on locks two and three. And this is where I take key number seven and arrange that to line up with lock three. And then I realize I will also need another single here as well. So now I have figured out locks one, three, and four. And all I got to do is just figure out that lock number two. So I start to look back through all the different keys that fit into that lock number two, just to get a little bit better perspective as I don't really have to worry about a lot of the different keys. And it's really just about trying to limit down to just five or six possibilities of keys that are going into lock number two. I just got to figure out what which ones they are. So this is where when I rotate this around, I kind of remember back to key number two, that key number two kind of fit into a lot of different ones and key number eight also now, as I rotated that around, fit into the open slots that were left by key number two on lock number two. So I have a pretty good assumption now that keys two and eight will now go to lock number two. So I just kind of verify that and yep, that's pretty much it. And so I've already lined up everything else and that's kind of what I was talking about earlier about no need to rush. You do not need to slot keys until you have the entire thing kind of figured out as sometimes they do overlap and sometimes you kind of want to go different approaches especially on the ones that do overlap quite a bit so as you go through and lock the whole thing you can see everything was lined up before i even slotted one and that is something i would highly recommend doing is lining up the keys to the lock before you even slot one that way as you go through and you're going through the different locks you can say yep that's that's lined up yep that's lined up yep that's lined up and it's just very easy to go so if you're trying to do this on the whim and doing one after another after another, it becomes a little bit cumbersome and a little bit more difficult to manage and you're not really sure kind of where you're at. So this will help you for all the different locks, but remember if you do not have the ability to see the blue highlighted locks from whatever key you are currently on, you have not spent any skill points on the security skill. So you will need to do that. And you're really not even being able to lock pick any of the advanced expert or master level locks anyways. 
you're just on the novice level locks. And just because it's a master level lock or an expert level lock doesn't really give you an idea of difficulty because I have had some master levels that were actually kind of easy and took me about a minute to figure out. And I've also had some master levels that actually took me about eight minutes to figure out. So it's just possibilities. It's not really difficulty. So sometimes these can take a little bit, but just take your time and you'll get it figured out. So hopefully this was helpful for you and get back out there picking them locks. Alrighty, take care.